We are going to take you live to a press conference where Mayor Olivia Chow is speaking at Second Harvest's headquarters in Etobicoke. Let's listen in live. I'm honored to be here at Second Harvest. I have long history, even in the 80s, um, when I was a school trustee with Second Harvest. And it's uh, Second Harvest is Canada's largest food rescue organization. I remember doing your first fundraising in a Chinese banquet hall and uh, persuading some of the Chinese big restaurant to take their leftover food so it could be rescued. When I come to an event like this, I always think of my mom, who a few years ago passed away in the 90s. Um, she believed that no one should go to bed hungry. So when I first became a city councillor in the city of Toronto, uh, children's advocate, that's quite a while ago, I asked all the children across the city, what would you do if you were mayor? And I get these, I built another CN Tower, I want more, yes, yeah, CN Tower, more playground, play space, um, uh, a few that are, you know, uh, a nice school yard and that kind of thing. But I remember one that is called Sylvia. She did a drawing. She's five years old. And it's a mom with a shopping bag with several kids, stick drawing. And then her teacher helped her write down what her, she wanted to say. And she said that she would like to ask God for more money to buy groceries. Here's a kid that have experienced hunger. In a land as rich as Toronto, Tro Ontario, Canada, you're right, Pastor Eddie, no one should have to ask God for money to buy groceries. No kid should go to bed hungry. No person should go to bed hungry. And yet, kid like Ariana, who escaped violence in her home country, comes to Canada, can make do, even though find some housing, but the rent is so high that she and her mom has to go and get the food bank to get food. Two buses, hour and a half, each way. And I'm imagining what would happen if she's one of the 50% that gets turned away. I am sure she is one of the 100,000 new people that needs the food bank. In fact, a, a third of the people that use food bank are in fact children. That's why when I was a counselor, Way back, I started the Children Nutrition Program. It has grown. It's now feed 230,000 kids in school across the city. That's 42.7 million meals. And this year budget, I added $1.6 million more into this program just to keep up with food inflation. And I'm committed to do a lot more so that we can expand this program even more. And as we see in today's data, the nonprofit sector have relied on, that we've relied on to fill the gap might not be able to keep up. And it's hard if 50% of the people on the waiting list that you have to turn away, your heart sank. It's hurtful when you say no because you don't have the food. And it's a big 30% increase in demand. And a big reason, other than the inflation, is the horrible cost, the outrageously high cost of rent. We have a housing crisis in our country and in our city, because for 30 years we have not built any affordable housing. That's the core of it. Because if people don't have to pay so much in rent, they will have some money left over for food. 
then they wouldn't have to, like tonight, 11,000 people live in a shelter, a city shelter, because they can't afford to pay rent. Sorry. All right, I'll stop being so angry about it. <coughs> the mic is reacting. Which is why, as your mayor, I'm committed to building more housing. We have to build housing. We have to build affordable housing. And I have, in, um, uh, in this budget, we have included uh, 1,300 more units on rent gear to income housing, more affordable housing, more support for renters through programs to prevent evictions, because when you're infected, you're lost. You don't know what to do. More housing benefits. The housing benefits that are housing some of the refugees moving from shelters, you've seen them, right? Moving from shelters into actual homes, permanent homes. They, so they can get back on their feet, so they could get the work permit, they could work. And um, we are doing all of that, but uh, it's not enough. And uh, we have a grant program a big increase on the funding for grant programs, so food, insecure, food security programs, uh, community kitchens, food banks, cooking classes, you name it, uh, bringing communities together to grow food, and uh, that uh, received a tremendous boost in the grants program. By making rent more affordable, making life more affordable, we can give people stability in their homes and more hope for the future. Pastor Eddie, you're right. It's not just giving them food. It is giving them the confidence, the power within themselves to say that I too can work for change. I too am hungry for change. Thank you to Second Harvest for your important work through the years in fighting food insecurity, the enlightening uh, research into the challenges the nonprofit sector is facing this year supporting people. I look forward to working with you to address the root causes of poverty, of food insecurity. We are hungry for change. We are hungry to end poverty, to end food insecurity. We are hungry for food justice. We have to do this together because we are always stronger together. We are partners together. And together we can build a city that is more affordable, more caring, safer, where everyone, whether they use any food security or not, where they are from, it does not matter, where they all feel they belong, they could contribute, where they could see results when we're hungry for change. Thank you. All right, Olivia Chow, looks like she's not taking questions there. She is speaking at Second Harvest's headquarters in Etobicoke after a new report found the country's food charities expect to be under even more pressure this year amidst the cost of living crisis.